Welcome once again to Glasses in Session. Today we're going to be doing edges, eyes, and hooks for uh, two black capped chickadees. One's a little bit larger than the other. This one's more realistic. This one's just really cute. So we're going to start with the smaller of the two. Okay, so I'm going to need wire reinforcement on the tail, absolutely, because it's just set right on the side. And obviously the beak, because it, again, is just connected right on the edge. But the rest of the pieces look pretty secure to me. Oops. Should probably put that chickadee over here where he's not in danger. Start with the tail. I might do this in one strip of wire. I might do it in two. Okay, let's get some flux on here. The adhesive that allows solder to bond with the copper foil. I counted my birds. I said in another video that I have 33 birds that I'm doing. I've completed about 11, so I'm about a third of the way through. And once I finish those 33 birds, we're back to the drawing board with how to create a pattern and cut glass out. And I'm excited to get back to that because I really don't enjoy wire reinforcement that much, but it is absolutely necessary to ensure that a piece of glass is really strong. So we've got our black cap chickadee pretty secure. He's not going to roll on his belly of which I am very appreciative. But here's the thing, I don't want to pin this much because it's a very sharp curve downward and the solder will run below the wire. They're not to melt it and pull the wire up and that's a whole lot of no. So I only wanna, ooh, that was close. I only wanna solder it a tiny, tiny bit. There, just a tiny little pin. There, I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers, push the wire down against the edge. Until I've got enough to pin it again. It's probably a good place for another pin. I don't like using the iron with my left hand, but it's kind of necessary because I've already got a pin with my right. There we go. That's a nice pin because the solder ran down the edge, not below the wire, thankfully, and uh, gave me a pretty wide pin. Okay, now I don't even need to hold it because it's pretty tight against the edge. Hooray. And there's no flux on that part. I know because the iron is not, the solder's not leaving the iron. Beautiful. I'm going to pinch it against the edge here, and against the edge again, and just to keep that, I really, 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 really want to keep that centered, so I'm going to pin it again. It's a little bit excessive with the pins, but I don't want to have to straighten it again. So I'm going to pin this at the tip of the tail, nice, so it doesn't mess up on me. I'm going to go ahead and estimate how much wire I need because this spool is already annoying me. Probably not more than that. That should take me around the beak. Okay. So now I'm going to press, ow, that's, uh, that's warm. I'm going to press wire, okay, I'm going to have to pinch it like so because I can't press on it. It's too hot to press on because I need my finger on the other side. Okay, that is 
perfect right there. Really centered. Really? See, now it's not as centered. I had it just perfectly before. Okay, sugar. You're going in the blocks, which is usually a good thing, but in this case, I'm making a bad thing because this piece is misbehaving. My hands are a little slippery from the flux. Here we go, got it pinned. Hip hip hooray. Let me get another pin. It's a good idea to pin it when it changes direction. So this has a curve upward here at the tail. It curves downward for the back and then upward again for the head. So at each curves, it's a good idea to get a pin. Or not get a pin, but it's, it's a good idea to pin it to the edge. Okay. Stay. There's a lot going on right now. I'm pushing it down and to the side so it wants to go into the blocks and it's it's complying with the pressure, which I don't want it to do. Got it. Okay. Pinned it there. He's trying to roll on his belly. Rock on his belly, I mean. I'm going to push this wire in where the beak begins, but I need to be very careful that I don't push too hard on the beak because I could actually move it out of place. Because it's just right on the, it's soldered onto the edge. Okay. That's a good bend, but it won't stay down. So I've got to hold it while I pin it. This is going to be another one where it's not cooperating. Flux helps. <laughs> Flux always helps! Okay, he's trying to rock on his belly. This is... It's getting annoying. I'm going to try and force his head down. I'm holding the blocks with these fingers here together. There's a lot going on. This, like most other things, would be absolutely impossible without opposable thumbs. Okay. So now I'm going to bend the wire around the edge of the beak, pinch it close. Now I did cut the wire a little bit short here because it doesn't extend from the beak to the neck. It ends still on the beak, so it's not as strong as it could be, but it does have the top layer. So I'm satisfied. I shouldn't have cut it that short though. Voila! Okay, now it's time to do the edges. I'm not going to do the eye first this time. I usually do it last. I did it first last time. After the wire, that is. And uh, I already soldered both faces of this earlier. All of the 33 birds are already soldered. Front and back. I've just got to do the edges for all of them. And it's back to cutting. I keep mentioning that. I'm really excited about it. It's really fun. Okay, so let's place some solder on the edge here. This time I'm not worried about creating a smooth line, I'm just placing the solder. Might mix it up later and smooth it out as I go. It's always good to mix things up.
It's basically just putting a lot of pins on right now. You know, like I pin the wire to the edge. I'm basically just putting a ton of pins on, and now I'm smoothing them out. You know, be careful to let the solder cool. Let me clean it off. Get the dust off. Uh, it's better to let the solder cool before you adjust the bird so that the solder doesn't run down the side with gravity. Wow, this line is really straight. You can better the smoothness of your line by making the edge of the glass smoother when you're at the grinding stage, when you're pressing the glass against the grinding stone. Uh, because the solder will reflect everything below it to a certain extent. It's not reflecting the wire because it's covering it entirely, but if the glass bends, then the, the solder will want to do the same. I'm going to need flux here in a minute. Okay, let's do the underside. I'm just going to flux the entire underside. Lift my solder up a bit here so it's more accessible. Just smacking it on. Oop, chop some. Go ahead and recycle some of the solder that's down here. That's very dirty. Been doing this craft for well, I haven't been doing this craft for eight years. I've known how to do this for eight years. The five years that I was in college I didn't really do much of this at all. I tried to take a class for it, but not enough people signed up and it was cancelled. It would have just been playtime for me because I already knew everything about it. I learned to do stained glass at a studio. I worked there for two years as an artist in making sun catchers for the windows. They taught me the craft, and my pay steadily increased the more and more I knew about stained glass. I became more valuable to them. So that's how I learned at a studio. They do offer classes to everybody, but I got the classes free because I worked there. They wanted me to be more valuable. Almost done. Just gonna, I forgot about the beak. Okay. Beautiful. Love these lines. Really, really, really smooth. So now let me clean up the lead lines where they meet the edge. They melted those away. I need to bring them back to the edge. Merge the two. We're going to do an eye and a hook. And this chickadee will be good, and we'll move on to the other black cap chickadee before ending the video.
Got some bubbles coming up from below the solder. Sometimes air gets trapped between the two layers of solder. That'll never happen on the first layer. Air can always find its way out. But the second layer of solder you put on you can sometimes trap air, and when it melts, it bubbles up. It's okay to be down there. It doesn't do the glass any harm. It's not really a structural issue at all. If there's water in there, then it can be a problem. If there's flux in there, water isn't really a part of this unless it can somehow get in during the cleaning process. Otherwise, water would never get under the solder. There's a lot to it. Oh, I missed one. Actually, no, I already did that one. Clean up the edge here a little bit. Before I move on to the other side. Okay. Okay, nice. Now for the hook. You put that in line with the solder. I'm going to take my wire here. I'm going to run it through the towel rag, what you will. This straightens and cleans it. Take my pencil, take the wire around the edge to create a nice even circle. It's a little bit small, but that's okay. Small bird, small hook. I'm going to bend the legs downward together, try and merge them as closely as I can so that it's easier to hide them below the solder. Bam. Okay. Now I need to bend the legs so they're in line with the solder line. Aligned with the solder line. It's a bit better. Okay, get some flux, melt the line, and just, you pl just place the legs onto the line and you push them down with the iron and the heat will transfer through the wire legs into the solder below and it'll just melt right down into it. Now let me bury it a bit more. And there we are, we have a hook, that was faster than usual. Very cooperative. Probably because that portion was already hot. Okay, now for the eye. And this guy is done. The eye, I'm just going to put a dot of solder on, but not quite merge it with the line. Beautiful. Wait for that to harden. And again, you know, in case I want to flip it on the hook, if it's like in a window and I want to have him face the other direction for a little bit, it's kind of nice. If I was stuck on a window, I'd want to be able to get a different view every now and then. Sweet, so let me clean that up a little bit. Coolio. There's always one, there's always, 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 always one little part that you can touch up. It's a perfectionist, perfectionist's playground. But I'm satisfied. Okay, this black capped chickadee is good.
Now we're going to do the other one before I end the video. Ow. That's very warm. It's a little bit bigger. I think this one's actually more realistic than the other. The, the head to body proportion for this is a little bit off. This one's a bit more realistic. So on one side, we've got a yellower belly. On the other, it's a bit wider, but it's got a nice textured glass that catches the light differently. Also, it feels different than the smooth glass. So both sides are good for that reason. Wire reinforcement, obviously the beak, always the beak. Almost always the beak. And this one, yeah, the tail needs wire reinforcement too, I guess. But I'm not going to go all the way around the tail. I'm just going to do two lines, which I don't know if I've done before for, you know, recording that is. But I'm going to go ahead and cut them. Just two lines of wire. Get my blocks over here. And ba essentially I'm doing the exact same thing I've been doing with the wire when it's still attached to the spool. And said so this time I need to make sure the lines of wire, these little sticks are centered for maximum support. I'm doing this because this is the only crucial part that needs support. With the other black cap chickadee, it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit less of a distance between the tail and the beak, which is why I kept it in one long piece. But with this one, it's a bit longer, and that's kind of a waste of wire since it wouldn't add up, add that much support. And I'm having some trouble here, so I'm gonna stop talking. Focus. Okay, got that end, that end capped. I was trying to cap the middle because there's some solder there from the brake line. That wasn't working, so I capped the edge. Now let me melt the solder that's below the middle so I can push the wire down into it. Kind of an improvised pin. And then pin the other side. See, that's a lot faster than working with the spool. Sometimes you need the spool if you don't know how much wire you're going to need. And the shape of this bird is also contributing to the ease of the wire reinforcement. It's not, you know, trying to rock on its belly like the last one was. Okay, I've got the wire just sitting on the edge right now. Already got flux on it. I'm going to try to, as soon as I press down on this and then lift back up, it's going to want to move. So I need to hold it with the wire. Sorry, with the plier. Pliers to pin it. Okay, there we go. It's a good pin. Nice. Wow. Fastest I've ever done a ta tail, I think, at least on video. And now the beak, which is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's got a pretty sharp angle. I'm going to go on the side without a sharp angle. And I really enjoyed not using the spool, so I'm just going to cut a large segment off, which might result in me wasting a little bit of solder, sorry, a little bit of wire that I don't use. But if it's worth not using the spool, then I'm okay with it. That spool, you know, the, its weight pulls on the wire. It's rather frustrating. Right now I'm, I'm trying to paint the solder that's already there off so it's out of the way. That's relatively flat. Now the solder stuck on the edge of this wire when it came off and... Don't want that on there at all. It's not your time. Wow, that was hot. Okay, I would like to be hot still. 
would like to bend him upward. That means he's just balancing on his tail, and there's not much of his body that's between the blocks. So it might be a little unstable, but we'll find out. Okay, this has got to bend upward. There's no way I'm going to be able to pin this flat. See, because I'm not using the spool, I don't know exactly how much wire I need. I really just cut what I'm hoping is more than enough. And because, unlike the last chickadee, this doesn't extend to the tail, if this doesn't cover the entire beak, then I need to recut the wire and start over. Because it's not connected to the tail. That's less support. Do I have flux? I think so, but better safe than sorry. Okay, got that pin. It's a little high. It could go lower. There we go. It's a little bit closer to the edge now. It wasn't. It was hovering a bit. Now I'm gonna pinch wire down. Pin it here. Okay, moment of truth, come around, wow, barely makes it, but yes, it is over, the wire is over the head piece, probably should have made that wire cut a little bit longer, I just really didn't want to waste any. And there we are. Wire reinforcement complete. Okay, now we're going to do the edges. This time I'm going to start out smoothing the line as I go. I already know that. It's just throwing it on. Glob after glob, and then smoothing it out, it, it just feels like it's going to take longer now. Maybe it's because I did that recently. So I'm going to make sure it's smooth as I add solder to the edge. Talked about most of the aspects of soldering edges on the last black chickadee, black cap chickadee. So there's not a whole lot more I can say right now. I don't think I've said in this video that you need to watch out for stained glass that has a flat edge. Um, edges that look like this right here, how there's just a thin film painted on the edges. It's really cheap, saves a lot of time in solder, but it doesn't look nearly as pretty as having rounded edges. Also, you know there's no wire reinforcement below it because it, it 
it would stick out like a sore thumb. Very obvious. Anything below a film of solder, that thin of film, everything is obvious. Every imperfection in the glass, it's very clear. But with rounded solder, it hides a lot of those imperfections, so you don't have to spend quite as much time grinding the glass. So I think it's worth it. It looks a lot better, and it's uh, more structurally sound because there's more metal on the edge. So watch out for those. I've seen, I haven't seen it so much in person as I have on online. Uh, but if you go to a restaurant, sometimes they just have flat, the, the solder that connects the glass, it's just flat. Sometimes on lamps too, it looks awful. But people don't really know the difference. But now, you do. It's easier to just put the solder on with straight lines. Because they're a lot easier to smooth into than curves. I like to take my time with the curves. Here, I can smoothen it in multiple places and it won't run down the side. curves like his chest that I'm coming up on. Those are a bit more tricky for applying the soldering iron in multiple places. So I'm going to start uphill. That's always a good idea. You uh, maneuver the bird so that the solder is at the top of the curve, not the bottom, because it's better for it to flow down than up if it's going to flow at all. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, cool. The edge is done. I'm going to clean up the solder lines where they meet the edge. Because I pushed those back when I soldered the edge. So now I need, to, I need to bring the solder line back to the edge to meet it and merge it. Usually requires a little bit extra solder. Kind of like if you're a guest to dinner, you you bring something to add, or like a or like a compromise or a treaty, something like that. You bring something to um, reflect your goodwill. Kind of how I think about it: bringing extra solder to make the solder lines meet the edge. That's what I was correlating, in case that wasn't clear. Good. Some more flux. Flux of flu. Flux of glue. Lots of glue. Goo. Not glue. Goo. Well, it is glue. It's glue for the solder. It's not sticky at all to me. It kind of feels like syrup, but less sticky. It's just like a film. But it is glue for the solder. Glues it right to the uh, foil.
But to me, it's goo, not glue. Voila. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna do the eye before the hook this time. As before, just a little dot. Don't merge it with the line. If you mess up, you can merge it with the line and then drag the solder elsewhere. But you can actually, if, if, if the solder's like melted, you can drag it along the line to another part of the glass if there's too much in a certain area. You can do that. So if restoring an eye does that, then that's an option. But it's best to just not mess up. <laughs> if only. If only that were a choice. It's sticking to the iron. There we go. That's a nice round dot. Very nice. And now a hook. Man, I'm having trouble deciding which side. Let me look at it in the light real quick. Yeah, that's really pretty glass on both sides. I'm not exactly sure which to make the front. Yeah, I guess this will be the back. Because here, I've got streaky glass on this wing, which is really pretty. But on the other side, I've got a pattern in the white. And uh, the glass pattern here flows along with the wing instead of just a streak across. So this side is actually prettier, even though it's less yellow. Which, I don't know, that actually might be more accurate for black cap chickadees. So this is going to be the back. That's my, that's my thought process there. The hook, you guys have seen this a hundred times if you watch my videos enough. Same old hook. I mean, all this is kind of rinse and repeat. Literally, huh? Because I have to rinse the piece in water to get the flux off. There's also this uh, chemical called flux remover. It's a real thinker. But uh, that chemical is necessary to get the flux off. Water alone won't take it off. But still, rinse and repeat applies. Okay, it doesn't look like I'll need to bend the legs of the hook. It's going to melt where I want the hook to go in line with the aligned with the solder line. I'm just going to press on the legs to transfer the heat through them into the solder below. Ta-da! I'm going to need to bury it a little bit more. Voila! Make sure that it didn't melt through the other side. Okay! Second black chickadee done. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to clean these two guys off and then um, I'm going to take a break for a bit. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.